We often celebrate New Year's Eve, and some of us do that by making New Year's resolutions that we often don't keep. And some of us make New Year's resolutions that are just plain weird. In this case, this young man here seen on the screen, I'm pretty sure didn't have a New Year's resolution to commit a crime. But this is the case of 27-year-old Richard Hall. If you want to know more about this case, please continue watching. A man was shot to death inside a Harlem hotel on New Year's Eve just about an hour before the beginning of 2020, according to police. 27-year-old Richard Hall was shot in the torso in the New Ebony Hotel on 112th West Street between St. Nicholas Avenue and Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, police said. Officers responded to an assault call at the hotel and found the Harlem man suffering multiple gunshot wounds, according to police. Hall was rushed to Mount Sinai St. Luke's Hospital but could not be saved. And they think that the young man who is seen in this photo might have answers to his murder. They suspect that this young man seen here in the photo might have answers to his murder because he was seen leaving the hotel just after the shooting and they think that he may know something but hopefully this is just a coincidence and this man has nothing to do with his murder but I'm pretty sure if they suspect that he has something to do with it there's more to back it up than just this photo hopefully. The New Year's Eve shooting capped off a 2019 that saw a rise in the number of murders in Central Harlem's 28th Precinct. Four murders had been reported in the precinct as of December 22nd, making that murder the fifth shooting. The precinct had zero murders in 2018, according to NYPD crime statistics. The number of shootings in that precinct rose from seven in 2018 to 13 in 2019, according to the crime stats. And that's a way to cap off a, uh, new, a new Year's Eve that I'm pretty sure no police precinct wants to see because who wants to deal with a murder especially one that occurs so close to the new year because mind you this happened i believe four hours just before the new year of 2020 and that had to make solving the case much harder than it would on a regular day because you have to think there are people that have traveled to that state and who are leaving the state so it makes it a little more difficult to solve these cases when you have so many people coming and going from different places and you don't know which way to go for leads and witnesses because you know people might have might have saw something but now they're gone back to their state and some people that might know something have gone to another state so people are traveling from one destination to another and that makes it harder to um collect witnesses and even statements and I know sometimes when the dispatcher has to relay things to the responding officers and EMTs and also the fire departments, things get a little chopped and screwed depending on who's making the call to 911 because of what they may have seen or heard or whatever. So these things can be a little bit screwed up when they come in versus when they go out to the officers that have to respond. So that is understandable. Um, but I would like to know why was the call reported as an assault when there was clearly someone who was shot in the torso. Um, and I'm pretty sure that if that would have been reported when the call went out or was made to 911, the officers probably would have gotten there a little bit quicker. Um, because they're thinking that, okay, this is an assault and whoever is, you know, fighting or 
whoever did whatever they did to the person probably has fled the scene and now the person might be a little shaken up but at least they're gone but if this call would have been made a little bit sooner and reported correctly maybe the officers and the emts would have gotten there just a little quicker and they probably could have possibly saved this man's life or even caught the person because chances are they probably were somewhere you know, nearby and, you know, they could have been questioned or arrested or what have you. But since the call was probably, well, since the call was reported as an assault, they, you know, took their, they probably took their time to get there. And I also have to ask, what is the relation um, to the victim that this man here in the photo might have um are they were they friends at one time are they rivals for some reason um did the victim owe this man or his friend some money how did this man if he has anything to do with this murder how did he know where this man was going to be on that particular day and was it just a crime of oh this is this man I have this reason to, you know, hurt him or what have you. And now this is my opportunity. So I'm going to take the opportunity to get my revenge for whatever reason. Um, What was the reason that these two men would have to interact with each other in this way? Did he, you know, do something to this man? This man just you know, felt like, okay, now that I have my chance to get revenge, I'm going to do that. What was the purpose of, you know, them interacting in the way that they did? And anyone with any information is asked to call the NYPD's Crime Stoppers hotline at 800-577-TIPS, 800-577-TIPS, or 800-577-8477. Again, that number is 800-577-8477. And like I always say, you can remain anonymous if you choose to do so. And I know that may stop some people from calling in these tips if they have any. But unfortunately, guys, that brings me to the end of today's video. If you like today's video, please don't forget to leave me a like. Don't forget to leave me a comment down in the comment section below. And if you're not subscribed, please make sure you subscribe before you leave because that helps me out so much with this video. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.